there you go. It's reaching. And it bends. And it bends away. Hey! Yes, we did it. That is so cool. This color can make your heart beat faster. Um, color can make my heart beat faster. I like the color blue. Did you buy me something blue? I don't know, maybe red. I feel like red is something to do with your heart. And like blood, red, red, blood. Shucks, guys, you're so sweet to me. Oh, that is so pretty. So right here, this is a tourmaline. And you may wonder, how did I know that? Number one, these striations right here, you see those on a lot of rough tourmaline crystals. But the real reason I knew that this was a tourmaline is because of that crystal structure. Trigonal, so one, two, three, with those marks here on the side. And that color, I knew pretty quick that this was actually gonna be a rubellite tourmaline. I wanna show you something really cool. This specimen is Russian, and you can actually see different colors when you shine a light through it. So when I'm looking straight right there, I see a lot of red. When I look on the side, I see kind of more purple on the bottom right there by my finger. But when you're kind of looking through the middle, I see a little yellow, I see some pink. And I just think that is so cool about tourmaline. Tourmaline comes in a variety of different colors. It really is a stone of the rainbow. Um, you are probably familiar with Pariba tourmaline, which looks like Windex, um, Indicolite, which is blue, watermelon tourmaline, which is my favorite. And we've had that on the show before. It is um, kind of green on the outside and pink on the inside. Tourmaline is chemically complex. So there are a lot of little pieces that go together to make these really bright, vibrant colors. So we have another box. Oh my gosh. Examples A and B. We have some pink and we've got some red. So we are gonna bring these out. When you look straight into the table, which is that top part right there, you can see a few inclusions and that's what makes rubellite so interesting and beautiful. Rubellite is a type three stone. Type one, you're really not gonna see any inclusions with the naked eye. Um, type two, you're gonna see a few. Type three stones, it is generally accepted that there's gonna be eye visible inclusions. These inclusions are really important to gemologists. They teach us a lot about the crystal structure and that's just a really good way to learn about what was going on when the stones were um, growing. Those striations, if they're lined up perfectly, can actually give us a cat's eye, which you all know as chatoyancy. And if you wanna learn more about chatoyancy, check out this video after you're done watching this video. It is about a seven, seven and a half on the Mohs scale. Um, but what's really cool is that tourmaline is a very good choice for jewelry because there's really no cleavage planes. A cleavage plane is when the crystal structure is a little bit weaker. And if you hit it just the right way, you can just so it's able to be faceted, able to be cut in cabochons, and that's why you see so much tourmaline in jewelry. It's just a really stable, solid choice. Rubellite is the Elbite type of tourmaline, and I am gonna say at this point, my fantastic team are gonna pop up that chemical composition on the screen. Elbite actually gets its name from Elba, Italy. Napoleon Bonaparte was actually exiled to Elba, Italy. Maybe one day we can go to Elba, Italy and find Elbite and tourmaline and I can bring it home. This is kind of the pink one. This is more of a red. Immediately when I see the stone, I'm a, my eye is attracted to that beautiful color. Quick chemistry lesson. We can thank manganese for that color and rubellite. You will see a lot of stones in the industry that are more soft pink. Those arguably are not rubellite, they are pink tourmaline. Let's do a quick closer look. I want you to take a closer look, these are both rubellites, at the differences in color. This is red, this is more of like a pinkish red. Rubellite really has to have that dominant red look. What's also really cool about tourmaline is its ability to conduct electricity. We're actually gonna do a science experiment. I like to think that I am a bit of a mad scientist. I have really, really wild curly hair and I have to settle down the mad scientist look to go on YouTube. I'm gonna bring Elizabeth in and I am gonna let her explain to you the science experiment because her and her husband actually built, I'm gonna call it a contraption that we're gonna use today on the episode. This is gonna be pretty cool. 
this is like cool and all, but I, I wanted to bring our third guest on. Third guest? Third guest. What's your third guest? Who's your, oh. <laughs> Chocolate. Toblerone, why do we have a Toblerone on the show? It's not because Elizabeth and I love Toblerone. It's not because Toblerone has been on the show before. It is because, Elizabeth, it's trigonal. And what else is trigonal, Elizabeth? Tourmaline. hey -oh. And on this show, Elizabeth and I will always find a way to bring chocolate, so. I'm gonna hold off because it's a heat lamp and we might melt the chocolate. So what we have here today is we are going to be showing an experiment about pyroelectricity. So pyroelectricity is this really cool phenomenon that some gemstones have. What happens is when you heat the crystal, it creates a charge. Now what's interesting about tourmaline is when you heat it, it gets a positive and a negative end, just like a polarized magnet. What you're seeing is a bicolor l -bi tourmaline, and then you have these dry tourmaline. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna heat these tourmaline crystals. As they heat up, you're gonna see these tourmalines start to swing. And what they're doing is they're actually repelling and attracting different ends of their crystals toward one another. Very cool. Okay, let's do this. The bulb is now on and it heats up pretty quickly. So this will get up to 80 to 100 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, That's hot. It's pretty hot. You guys can see these are starting to move. Practical applications of tourmaline use today is in motion detectors. And this is basically proving the hair dryer. Yeah. Okay, so for all of you who maybe have a hair dryer that has what? Tourmaline. tourmaline in it. Today's science experiment is basically the- What's happening. Is basically what's happening. So as your blow dryer heats up, those tourmaline crystals are going to heat up and they will actually pull the electrons out of the air. So you don't get static. So you don't get frizz. <laughs> so as you can see, they're starting to move more and more. These crystals, they will line up straight like a T and then they will turn to their polarized ends. They're not just spinning around randomly. I talked to my husband about this. He's, he's an engineer and he knows more about electromagnetic fields than I do. But he said that when you see them, they will line up and then all of a sudden they will shift again. Basically what's happening is unless you're operating in an absolutely perfect magnetic field. Which this is. This is not. This is definitely um, not. <laughs> they are going to hit that polarization correctly and then it'll table. move again because they will just become out of balance. So. They are swinging in unison now. Yeah, which is. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We're also going to show you some down feathers from a goose. They can be really static. There's a ton of static. In There's those. a ton yeah. of static. And so we're going to demonstrate how you have a positive and a negative end on these tourmaline crystals. This is the best part of our job is for Elizabeth and I is doing cool stuff like this, sharing it with you, and it always involves chocolate and gemstones. I just wanted to show you guys that you can actually drag Hey, these crystals that's wild. with a magnet. So I'm gonna remove the light just that's so we hot. don't we have, have it's pretty it. hot. So we no, don't gemolog touch that. no gemologists have been injured in the making of this video. Eh, slightly, I burned myself the other day on okay, accident. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm fine. Let's see if the down will move for oh. me. So you can see this little guy, it's being repelled by one end and is attracted by the other. And so you can see that little arm move. It's difficult. Our own static charges on us can actually affect it. Even depending on the humidity, it kind of changes. You never quite know how strong it's going to be. We're gonna do the experiment again. We have to just try to get it to that perfect temperature mm -hmm. to really get a good reaction. So people may actually recognize these tourmaline crystals. These are from the cis gemology reference. <laughs> Christopher was not really happy with me using them, but I told him that nothing bad was going to happen and to them. I was just stringing them up and hanging them over a hot lamp. We should always use our nice things. So that is that is lined up right there and it'll swing off. So these guys line up Look really it, quickly and really easily. So it worked. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn it off. That's hot, I can feel that from here. It's pretty hot. Okay, ready? Okay. Static time. Okay, so get the little down guy going. Just kind of pinch it. Oh, there we, we go. go. So let's I don't see. know about you, I'm holding my breath right now. I feel like um, a parent watching their child walk for the first time. I can see, I, So see how it's actually it's bending moving, right there and it's staying away. And then it moves there. And then it's actually attracted to this end. 
That so is you are so cool. Yep, there you go. It's reaching. And it bends And it hey! bends away. Woohoo! Yes, we did it. That is so cool. So I hope everybody can That's see cool. this because this is super exciting to me. Good job, Elizabeth. So, Thank you to you and your husband for building this. You guys oh, are pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. We're lucky to have you guys. Thank you to Christopher for letting us use the specimens in the book. They were not hurt. We took very good care of them. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. You don't want to miss out what we've got coming up next. There are bound to be more episodes filled with mad scientists, great jewelry, um, heroin adventures, and hopefully some chocolate. Um, in the meantime, Elizabeth and I are gonna put our heads together and try to find a way to blow something up on this channel. We'll try our best. <laughs> Anyways, that's what we're going to do. Um, we'll catch you later. I hope you learned a lot today about Rubalite. Thanks for joining us. Bye.